Well, thank you. I, I have to tell you, I, as was mentioned in the opening, I was in private practice for 25 years, uh, happy and content, and then felt led to, to do this challenge. I'd never been involved in politics before, and my wife and I did a lot of soul searching and praying and got into this race. Well, I had no idea of how boring my private practice was until I got into the Attorney General's office. I stepped in there with a lot of bright lawyers to work with. Sitting down, uh, we were looking at uh, a couple of these lawsuits. Both Ken and I, uh, when we took office in January, the, our predecessors had already uh, begun this lawsuit. Uh, and also I had found that we had sued the state of Colorado on a marijuana issue. Uh, we had the Keystone Pipeline decision that was coming down. So it's really been, uh, what, six, seven weeks, but uh, been a very exciting time uh, in this office. I've enjoyed getting to know Ken and his wife, Angela, and uh, I think both of us are excited, but in some ways it is a, everyone said it is a fire hose, and it definitely is uh, in some of the issues that we're dealing. A lot of that has to do, though, because we do have a very aggressive federal government. In Nebraska, one of the big issues that we're addressing is the EPA's uh, drafting of regulations under the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. And uh, for me, I do believe as a state, you have stewardship responsibilities for your environment. But what really irritates me is when a federal agency uses philosophical uh, motivations to cause states to have to respond, not based upon good science, but rather a philosophical opposition to coal and expansion of water rights. But I know the topic here today is with regards to the immigration uh, lawsuit, and I shouldn't say immigration lawsuit, because I think, frankly, when uh, we as attorney generals have talked about this case, it's not so much about the topic of immigration, but that's certainly the impact that it has, but it's really this extension of executive power, uh, federal power, uh, that has a significant impact. In Nebraska, we have a fairly uh, significant Hispanic community. Uh, and in some ways, in a lot of these communities, it's really transpired since 1990 uh, because a lot of that's due to the meatpacking uh, plants that we have in Nebraska. In fact, one of the things that, uh, for me personally, it's kind of exciting, my youngest son just took on uh, uh, his first teaching job of American history in a community called Lexington, Nebraska. Lexington, Nebraska is a classic community uh, in Nebraska. It has 11,000 residents. 65% of Lexington is, is Hispanic, uh, and that's due to the fact that there's a Tyson chicken plant facility there. And uh, it has been, for my son, who's both a football coach and a history teacher, uh, it's been a great experience for him in Lexington. And Lexington is a great example of how, over the years, this community has embraced and, and, and worked well as, as new residents are coming in, particularly from Central America. But that doesn't mean that we should allow federal government to uh, uh, run without any accountability on its laws. So we joined in this action because it would have an impact on Nebraska. Obviously, in Texas, it's a much more significant impact, but it does have an impact on Nebraska because the, the community uh, of both Lexington, Schuyler, Grand Island, Sioux City, these are four mid-sized uh, towns in Nebraska with significant uh, uh, communities of Hispanic uh, citizens, uh, both who have been here for several years and have proper citizenship, and others who have come because of jobs but do not have that status. So the impact of this uh, action by the president is, is significant. One of the things that is troublesome, um, in judge, the judge's opinion, Judge Cannon, he, there were two issues raised. Or it was brought under two claims. One was Article II. Uh, the execution of powers uh, responsibility of the president. And the second one was uh, challenging compliance with the APA. And frankly, the judge went with the second argument primarily in the opinion, saying that the, the notice provisions of the APA Act were not properly complied with. I've seen that some uh, uh, professors, you're not a professor, are you? Because I'm about to criticize professors. Go ahead. How about it? <laughs> You've been to the real world, haven't you? <laughs> uh, I've seen some professors have argued that uh, the ruling under the APA Act is not significant, that it could be corrected, or it's not a very strong opinion in that regard. And frankly, I think when you make a decision like this and you run it, though it wasn't a, an actual executive order, it was a policy development by the agency, when you do something like that, and it, what it does in impacting four to five million uh, 
illegal aliens being able to uh, be given a pass while in the United States, that is a significant impact and it can't be ignored. I don't think uh, this decision by Judge Hanning can be uh, downplayed by simply saying, oh, it's only a process matter and it'll be corrected. The fact of the matter is the impact was intentional. It was clear in November that President Obama had said that if I can't get action in, uh, in the Senate and in Congress, that I'll go ahead, I'll go about it another way. So clearly the intent was to have uh, an impact of four to five million people be given new status in the United States and having a significant, significant impact on states like Texas and Nebraska. And you can't, you can't abuse the power, you can't uh, use the line prosecutorial discretion and have that type of impact. As Ken said, the rule of law is important. And uh, that's the principle that we're fighting for, is to say that when you, when you serve in the executive branch, you can't ignore the rule of law. And so we were pleased with the judge's opinion and hopeful uh, on appeal. Um, I do think as Nebraskans, uh, we very much have a common sense approach that uh, our leaders, both at the state level and the federal level, need to uh, show fidelity to the U.S. Constitution and we feel in this particular case that was not done, and so we're hopeful on appeal. But uh, other than that, uh, I'll take any questions that you might have. I am also willing to talk about uh, Keystone and Colorado marijuana because I have strong opinions on that. But. Thank you.